our planet was born in fire, then grew with disaster. Yet even then, the elements of life were present. Water was soon present on the surface. When calm, it would provide a sheltered cradle for the first life on Earth. While the planet was born in fire, it was baptized by ice. For millions of years, it was covered by a frozen shroud. Yet it seems that life not only persevered, but prospered. Microbes evolved into a myriad creatures, and one was the first to leave the oceans forever and tread on land. Only a few million years ago, creatures that we most resemble began to walk the earth. Our own lives seem so fragile, yet science tells us otherwise. It tells us that we are but a part of the greatest journey ever made. It tells us that all life is linked through time to those simple cells which drifted once in the first oceans of a miracle planet. billion years ago, the Earth was a very different world. Under layers of thick, gaseous clouds was a planet still hot from its birth, with an atmosphere both dense and crushing. Bathed in filtered red light were oceans far deeper than those of today. And there was one other great difference. The early planet was probably only a tenth of the size that it is today. But it was to grow. And that chance and violent growth would prove crucial to life's history and to what we are today. The early solar system was far more crowded than now. Where today the four inner planets orbit, four and a half billion years ago were scores of smaller planets orbiting the sun. Orbits of some were drawn by gravitational force towards each other. Encounters of awesome magnitude were unavoidable. The force and heat of those collisions melted the rock, but gravity would hold the two together and then weld them into one. With each collision, the planet would grow larger. We believe that of the four innermost planets, Mercury was formed by only one or two such collisions, while Venus, almost the size of Earth, was formed by eight. Mars may have escaped any collision. But Earth grew largest, perhaps from as many as 10 impacts. And the last impact, four and a half billion years ago, would have a profound effect upon our world. giant body crashed into the center of the planet and gave Earth its iron core. The lighter debris was cast off into space and then drawn into orbit around the enlarged planet. For some millions of years, the Earth had rings like the planet Saturn. Smaller collisions continued, and from that debris was born our moon. It was chance and chance alone which made our planet larger than any of the other planets close to the sun. 
And somehow, somewhere in this chaos, life began. But quite where is open to conjecture and debate. First life uh, probably emerged on the Earth by 4.4 billion years ago, uh, fairly soon after the Earth formed. My guess would be that this life came from Mars. Uh, Mars was open for habitation before the Earth is. It's a much safer uh, place to live if you're a microbe early in the solar system. If life evolved on Mars, uh, rocks would get knocked off and this would seed the Earth. Could life have formed on Mars? We know because of the evidence of erosion that water once flowed freely on the surface, that Mars did indeed have an atmosphere, that conditions were suitable to sustain early primitive life. But Mars is a small planet with weak gravity. Over time, the atmosphere escaped into space. Most of the water vanished too, either into space or held deep in the ground as permafrost. We know too that Earth has been hit by rocks that originated from Mars. Some scientists are positive that primitive microbial life could withstand that journey. But the Earth, because of its size, had enough gravity to keep its oceans. Over the ages, continents have shifted their positions, wind and rain shaping and reshaping the surface. Ice has scraped its way across the face of the land, and the seas have risen and fallen again and again over time. Here, in Greenland, are some of the oldest exposed rocks ever to have been found. And one belt of rock, four kilometers, almost two miles long, may take us back as far as we can go in the long history of this planet's existence. Dr. Minnick Rosing of the Geological Museum of Copenhagen has visited Greenland many times in his research for evidence of Earth's early history. And close to the margin of the glaciers, at a place called Isua, he has found one of the oldest rock beds on the face of the planet. Here is the geological evidence that this was once an ancient seabed. This rock was once molten lava, which flowed 3.8 billion years ago. Its shape and structure identify it as pillow larva, which can only form under water. Pillow larvas show you that there was oceans on there, or that there was water on the surface of Earth 3.8 billion years ago. And we know on the ocean floor today that this is the habitat of many life forms. And this could be a, a um, place where life emerged on Earth in, in such environments. And this is a very rare thing. We have been walking now for a couple of hours through rocks where you can't see anything. And then suddenly there's like one square meter where you can look 3.8 billion years back in time and see what happened on Earth at that time. So there are a few very rare glimpses where you can look way, way, way back to the most distant part of Earth's history. But there is another rock, unremarkable to look at, which hit